Okay guys, what we're going to do this morning, we're going to do a demo of how to manipulate this big shoulder dart into the side seam. If, I, if you look at my little diagram here, I'm getting rid of the shoulder dart and I'm putting it into the side seam here. As you can see, there's no dart there at all. <laughs> and um, I'm going to do, use the system I'm going to use, it's called slash and spread. So, normally for pattern cutting guys, I would always ask you to use an HB pencil. But for my demos, I use Sharpies. I don't want to ever see you using a Sharpie for pattern cutting. The only place we ever use it, a Sharpie will be for labelling your patterns. So to begin with, what I'm doing here, I'm taking my spot and cross paper, and um, I'm using the spots and crosses on the paper. I'm actually placing the centre front here on my row of spots and crosses and I use the width. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing around, I say this would be a pencil, I'm using a Sharpie on this one. And I am marking the darts. want to mark the bus point. Okay. Now, whenever you take your block away, always mark, just get into the habit of always marking where the centre front is by going, say, F. And now I'm going to mark in my, my dart. So, marking in my dart, right up to the bus point here guys so can you remember what the I'm just going to draw this last line can anybody remember what that point is called in the pattern shoulder Isn't it? Yeah. neck point shoulder end and in the middle here we've got the bus point. Okay, so now we're going to indicate where we're moving this big dart to. I'm going to use, a, I'll use a, an orange pen. So what you do is you work out where you want to move it. I'm going to just move it randomly from the bus point to the side seam, like that. So I'm marking that line on first of all. And now I take my scissors, and um, thank you, Anna. Guys, can you see, whenever I'm cutting, that my scissor blades never ever leave, leave the table, the surface of the table. So I've now got my little pattern cut out. So what I'm doing guys, I'm cutting out that big dart, which is pretty ugly looking anyway. So that goes straight into the bin. And what I do here is, I cut along the line where I want to place my new dart and bring it back to its original position. And what I'm doing is close over, so I'm leaving the little, a little bit of paper there about a couple of millimetres at the bus point and I'm closing the darts over. And that's why it's called slash and spread. So you're slashing and you're slashing here and you're spreading open for the new dart. So I'm closing that over, as you can see here. Now, remember what I said to you about make, moving your darts back from, from the, the bus point. We're going to do that next and I'm going to show you how to do a dart inlay. 
So what we're going to do is go back, I've got my little pattern, and if you take some paper here, so take some paper, pop it underneath, and we've got tape on here. You see, I tend to use masking tape for pattern cutting because... Um, right it's Sorry? Right well, number one, you can write over it nicely. But take it off. No, yeah, you can take it off. It, it, as well as out there, it's, uh, it doesn't go yellow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now, let me get rid of that big wall of paper that I've got there. So let's do the dark inlay. I'm just going to, so you can actually see it in the video here, I'm going to draw that, yellow, that orange line back in again. Now, what we do at this stage, guys, we have to fold the dart into position as if we're going to sew it. So, we fold it over. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm folding it over like that, as if I'm sewing it. I'm putting a little bit of tape on it. And then taking and cutting along the side seam. And that will give me, open that tape that up, and that will give me the shape of the dart inlay. Now, whenever you're folding darts, you will always fold them the way you want the dart inlay to hang. Now, at the bottom of this, can you see this dart inlay is hanging down? So that would make that makes sense. You know, you, you wouldn't want to fold it up because the dart wouldn't want to stay up. It would naturally hang down on, on the bodice. So what we've, what we've got to left to do now is we've got to do this in green this time, green pen. We've got to just finish off the pattern. So I'm going to, from the bust point here, I'm going to drop that waist dart down by approximately four centimetres. And I'm going to drop that the side seam dart here again by four centimetres. You go to the middle of the dart and you mark in the new dart lines. And what I'm drawing in now is something called dart, we call these dart legs. The legs of the dart. Does that make sense? Dart legs? And these are my new darts. So what I've done now is move the, the darts back from the bust point and you use your notchers to mark, mark the ends of the darts here and you need your fancy little drill hole to mark the, the, dart, the dart points basically. Now we need, I don't, I don't want you to use <coughs> this straight onto the table because what it'll do is yeah. it'll gouge big holes out of the table. So we have a, a little green cutting board over there, but I'm going to use a bit of cardboard. Um, I'm going to just go in now and create the dart point. So that's your very first dart moved in into that position there. Okay. So we've moved the big dart from the shoulder into the side seam. And we've put in a dart inlay and we've labelled up the pattern. So okay guys, now what we do again, we're going to manipulate the other four um, positions uh, with the darts. So as you can see from my diagram here, this time the big dart here is going into the centre front, which gives a really lovely, lovely actually sh um, interesting style feature to your, to your garment. And quite honestly, some, sometimes darts can be ugly, but they also can be quite nice. They can actually create lovely style features. So what I'm going to do here again, I'm going to use my spots and crosses to align up my centre front with. Got it back. Okay, fantastic. Remember what I said to you guys, just always remember this is a nice procedure. Always remember you mark your centre front, whether it be the bodice, 
the skirt or whatever it is always indicate where the centre front is. I'm going to be very quickly here marking where... Right, so I've got my darts as you can see there. This time we want the dart here to move into the centre front. So we just highlight that. We're moving in there. So once again, I'm literally just at random indicating where I want the dart to go. And I'm going to have it ru running straight across from the bus point here. So I'm just drawing a line across. And I'm now going to very quickly cut out my, again, what I'm doing here, I'm cutting out the big dart, I don't particularly like it anyway, and I'm moving it straight in to the centre front. So close over your, your dart like that uh, and, and stick it down. So can you see how that enormous, big, ugly looking dart moved to a wee teeny weeny one in the centre front? I think that's pretty amazing stuff, how that dart size changes as you move it around the block. So Again, guys, I would just do a dark inlay on this one. So sticking the paper underneath like that. And getting rid of that little excess paper, which I don't need. And I want the dark inlay, which is the bit that, that, that's underneath the dart. I want it to hang down, so I fold it over as if I'm sewing it. Um, you can either tape it or pin it, or just simply, and then cut along the centre front. And then you can, you've got your little teeny dart inlay there. Now on this again, I want you to bring, uh, bring your um, darts down. I want you to drop that one down, the, the end of it down by four. So I want that end to drop down there by four centimetres. Jane, you're going to time covering it in between. Oh, right, thank you. Uh, bringing that back by four there is too much. I want you to bring that dart point by, by two. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's that one. Again, we put these up on the board so you can see them. I'm going to do the next one, which is number three, I think. Now, this is a a shape that we use a lot actually where we're taking the big dart here okay this big dart and we're bringing it down to here and incorporating the two darts together this is quite a common thing that we do in pattern cutting so again let me very quickly mark around the um, the block Again. So this time, I'm going to stick all of that big dart in there. So watch what I'm doing, guys. This time, very quickly cutting this out. Okay, so I'm cutting out the big dart. Cutting down the, what we call the dart legs here, down to the bus point. And this time, all I'm doing is cutting out up one side of the dart leg and the lower one, closing. Which side? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <coughs> Thank you, Lip. Thank you. And um, look, I'm closing up the dart, and all of a sudden, my dart's got a lot bigger, but a lot more lovely. Again, I'm going to do a dart inlay in this for you. I'm going to talk about things on this. I'm going to just put my, put my paper here underneath. Okay. 
walk in so that you can see the line because it's not very visible here on the telly. I'm just going to draw the black line in. Okay, so I've got quite a big dark inlay this time, haven't I? Now we want the dark inlay to be folding towards the side seam on this one. So look how I'm folding it. Folding it over like that. like that. So you can either pin it or stick it temporarily to give it a little bit of tape and cut it. Now, can you see how big the dart inlay is? What do you think would happen if we were using a really bulky fabric? The dart inlay would be yeah. the dart dart inlay would be huge, mm -hmm. wouldn't it? Okay. So what we do is, this is what we do, I'm going to go back to my orange pen. Again on this one from the bus point here, I'm dropping it down. Well first of all you find the mid part, the mid point in the dart. And So I'm dropping it down here by four centimetres. So my new dart, essentially, is much shorter. And again, we can notch that and drill hole it. Again, if you were folding that on a thick fabric, it would be really, really thick and cumbersome, wouldn't it? So what I would recommend if I was using a thick fabric was not to have a dart inlay, but have a seam allowance. So you just mark a, a centimetre seam allowance in there. And in that case, cut it out. So you're getting rid of all that thick bulkiness. And you're still you're still sewing up a dart because you're folding those bits of folding that over and sewing like that. You're cutting out the thick thickness from the dart inlay. Okay? Any questions on that? All good. Right, so move that one over there. And I'm going to do the other ones as well, guys. Um, so I'm going to do number number four. This time, again, this becomes a really nice style feature where you're taking the big dart and you're moving it into like a narrow head here, and that will only become a narrow head if you've got a centre meter, if you've got a seam in the centre front of your pattern as well. So again, that can be a really lovely style feature. So again, I'm just very quickly drawing around this. So if we go back to what we're doing, this is getting very confusing all the time. So I'm moving the big dart here into the centre front and we need to have a centimetre seam to make this look like a narrow head type of style feature. So I'm randomly putting where I want the arrowhead to be. So I'm just literally drawing it in randomly into the centre front there. And what I'm doing here, I'm cutting out both the big dart. Oh, oh I'm, I'm cutting out. So what I'm doing now, I'm cutting out the big dart. And I'm now cutting along the orange line, which is where I'm going to put the new dart. And I close over like that. And again, I don't think I need to do an, a, a, a dart inlay this time, have you? Do I? Okay. So I think you know how to do dart inlays. I want you to do dart inlays on all your patterns. So we move that one back by, by 
two centimetres, I think. So I'm going to put move back by two centimetres on that one. Okay. Okay. Now the final one is the more more complex one, and I'm going to do a darkening lay in that for you. Now this one is a really lovely shape. Now in the industry, what can you see here? What this is? Both darts. I'm moving at this time both tarts into the side seam here. And this is a very often called in the industry a French dart, where that, that angle of where that dart comes from there, it's called, it's got, it, the placement is just called a French dart. I don't know why. So guys, this time I say I'm moving the dart into the bottom here, the waist at the side seam. I'll just put it both sides so you can see it. And this could, this pattern could be set cut in the centre front, and it'll seam down the centre front if you wished. So I'm just going to pop it in like that. This is my new. Where my new dart's going to be, and this time I'm going to cut out both darts. There you go, the bin. Let's see what happens. in the middle to keep it all hanging together there. And I'm now going to cut up the dark place where I want my new French dart to be. So watch what I'm doing. I do that and I do that. And I've got this whopping big dart. Now guys, you would never want a dart inlaid to be the, as big as what this is going to be. So let me just this look nice. So I'll show you what you're going to do here. So can you see how the walking big dart this time? Both darts have been put in to the one. And again, if that wasn't a bulky fabric, could you imagine sewing that up with a big dart in the be massive and you wouldn't want it at all. It would not it wouldn't work. So what I'll do in a situation like that is put another bit of paper underneath. And we're just going to do seam allowances. So again, so do you either have seam allowance or dart in lines? Yes. Mm -hmm. So what I need to do here, look, is find the midpoint in the dart. So can you, I'm just going to find the midpoint. Can you sew the dart and then cut out the end line? You can do, yeah. But you can, yes, you can. That's a good point, yeah. So I'm finding the midpoint there at the opening of the dart. And in this case, we'll most definitely want to drop this back by four centimetres. So minimum four. And now add in, just draw in the lines of the dart. Okay. And I want to just do some lines.
again, I would again mark the end of the dart. Okay, so now what you would do is you would literally fold it this way, and then you can see you literally would fold over the dart legs here and sew up to the hole at the top. Right, now what I need you to do guys, I need you to take and do these four examples that I've just done.